YouTubers. This is part two of our wreath project. We're gonna etch the inside, or etch the letters that are going inside of our wreath. I have another video up on how to make the wreath itself. So you can check that out. Um, and I'll put a link down in the description. But we are gonna etch this. These are our free letters for the month of October up on the webpage. Um, I have all the letters A through Z and an extra spider. Um, so let me go show you what you need. All right, so we're gonna use the Silhouette Curio to etch our letters um, on these metal etching sheets from Silhouette. Uh, these are the etching sheets. They come in three colors, gold, and then this, they call this pink, but it's really more red, and black, the black one you saw. This is a this is another version I did. Um, but this isn't a Curio specific project. Um, all right, this isn't a Curio specific file. This is the same J, this is updated version. This was my original version, but it's the updated version. And you can cut this out of any material. Um, you can use the files for anything. See, where we are gonna use the little base that comes standard with all the Curios. Um, mine is dirty because I have been etching on it. Um, and we are gonna use the embossing mat. The embossing mat is the foamy one. It's the foamy one. Um, and we're gonna put it here. Obviously, take note, because it's etching, and I've been using the black ones, it's gonna become dirty. This is from the red. So just keep that in mind. You'll also need all of your platforms. The platforms have these numbers on them to tell you how tall they're gonna be. So um, we're gonna use the two and the two and then the foam mat. And then you'll just put them down and lock them into place on your mat, on your base. Okay, and so that's our mat. Um, now, and then we're obviously gonna use the, the etching sheets. They come like this. Um, there's three of them in here. Um, I wish they made different colors and sizes if anybody at Silhouette is listening to me, which I doubt they are. Um, you have a couple different options for etching. Um, this is the standard stippling etching tool that comes with the Silhouette can I don't know if it comes with it, um, but the, the Silhouette makes. My gripe with this one is that it doesn't always give the most easy, even etching. So you see it etched all of this and then it just didn't do this at all. So that's kind of my gripe with this one. But it's saving grace that it's kind of cheap. They're, I think they're about 10 bucks, give or take. The Chomo's etching tools are by far my preferred tool. Um, she's got two of them. Uh, this is the precision tip, and this is just the standard etching tip. I like the precision tip for this. Um, I wanna say these guys are about 30 bucks, um, give or take. But they're by far, if you're gonna etch and you're really gonna get into your curio, they're by far what you really want. Um, and this is a standard etching tip. So keep that in mind. Um, you are more than welcome to try the, the cheap one first and see if you like it. And then what I did, I'm taking it off now so it's all crumpled, is I have this really thin metal that I got off Amazon. Um, and what I did is I put this one on here and just glued it or taped it down to make it a little bit bigger on the reef because these only come in five by seven sizes. And if anybody, this is anodized aluminum, so if anybody knows where to get bigger sheets, um, please comment because I would love to have bigger sheets, but Silhouette doesn't make them, um, but to make it a little bit bigger on the wreath, and I'll put a link down in the description to everything up here, so you can go find it on Amazon, but let's go set it up in the computer. All right, so I'm in the Silhouette software, and right now um, I have Business Edition, and so um, I have my Cameo plugged in, and I have my Curio plugged in, and I have my Cameo mat right here. So what you need to do, if you have Business Edition, is go over to the Send panel, Go down here, and then we're going to see where it says "Bright Gold Cameo" with the with the check. And that is my um, default device right here. This is my black and white Cameo. I renamed them. Um, it's saying sinking because there's no bases in it. I'm gonna right click on that line, and then I'm gonna say "Set as Default Cutter." Now I'm gonna go back over here to Design, and I'm gonna have a mess. It says automatic 
Curio over here, and then Matt says automatic cameo. So we're going to go to Curio 8.5 by 6. And it's still kind of going to be a mess. So I always open a new window, and then it seems to kind of have figured it out by then. So that is our mat, and then we can close any of this stuff out. And no, we don't want to change. So this is our mat. Um, I do file and merge and go find my letter. And that is my J. And this is the updated J. So I'm gonna do, first of all, our sheets are five by seven. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and click my rectangle. And we'll just draw one out real quick. If I go over here to my arrow and click this and we're gonna go to the transform window and then the second one is the scale button and down here I can specify my um, my measurements so I'm gonna lock this guy actually no I'm not I'm not gonna lock him because then I can type in what I want um, my width is five and my height is seven and my height is seven all right, <clears throat> all right. So now in here, I'm gonna put my J. Interesting. So I'm gonna go over here to my fill tool and fill them in, and then we're gonna right click and send them to the back. That way you can see what I'm doing because I'm sure that outline's hard to see. And what you want to do is have him sort of in the middle, but you want room around the edge just in case you don't want it too close to the edge so that um because there's no grid on that embossing mat so you don't want it too close just in case the mat's off machine's off something like that because if it goes off the edge you've ruined your piece of um metal so that is our j and we put it in our five by seven box so that's going to be our sheet that we're going to etch on and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over, I call it this one, I call it the fat star. And we are gonna deboss, and you can pick any of these fillings, fills. And so, um, and what they do is they put various different fills in the, in the design. Um, this is the hatch and it does both ways. This is the swirl which starts in the inside and works out. This is the concentric circles and it makes circles inside each thing. And then this is lines. Now, you're only going to get this embossing panel if you have the curio and it's hooked up. Um, what you need to understand is you can mess with how far apart the lines are. So, this is, I think it'll go down a little bit more. But that's the that's this close together spacing it'll go. If it does this, it means it can't do it. And that's why it's giving you the box. And then if you put it up one more, that's where it can go. And you can also type in numbers in the box. Obviously, the more lines that you put in this thing, the longer it's going to take to etch. But if, um, but also the more detailed the design is going to be, if you have it way out here, the lines are really far apart. And you're probably not going to see that this is just going to kind of be a very faint kind of mess. So closer they get, the more detail they get. I just typed in that seven, typed in the eight. I generally like them as close together as they'll go. Um, the hatch tends to be my favorite. Um, it's also the one that takes the most amount of time. And you're probably looking at maybe 20, 20 minutes or so though to get this hatch to all fill in. And I think that's what we'll go with. I seem to like that hatch. All right, so now what you're gonna do is we have this guy all filled in with our hatch is we're gonna go back to the transform tool and we're gonna rotate him 90 degrees. And now we're gonna line him up right here. All right, and then we're gonna get rid of our box because we don't need it, we were just using it. And that's gonna be our J and that's where we're gonna put it on our mat and then the machine will etch it. I forgot to say when you, if you have 
if you just have um, designer edition, all you have to do is plug in your curio and turn it on. So unplug your cameo, plug in your curio and turn it on. And it should pop up. If it doesn't pop up automatically, open a new window. You may have to play with some of the set settings here in page setup, like I did. But plugging it in should just automatically get you this the cameo or the curio mat to come up automatically this curio mat. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our metal on our sheet and we'll put in our etching tip and then we'll let the machine etch. All right, so like I said before, we have our two, two, and then our, our embossing mat. Um, the embossing mat doesn't have a grid on it. It's got a grid around it. All right, so we're on our mat. The embossing mat doesn't have lines, which makes it a little trickier. So what you need to do is make sure it's even with this top arrow and then even with this. It's a little easier to see on my mat because it's dirty. They've been etching. The other interesting thing about this embossing mat is it's not really sticky to the touch, but when you peel this guy off, it's really sticky. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon. But um, let's go over to the machine. All right, so we're over at the machine. Um, this is our Chomo's etching tool. So I'm just gonna put it in tool one and we'll turn it. Now, right now on my machine, on my computer over there, it says loading base, or it says sinking. The reason it says sinking is because there's no bases in it. So don't panic. The power button is blinking because there are no bases in it either. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna load the bases in. And I just say load them all the way in because the notch is kind of hard to see. And then you'll hit the double arrow button. Hit this double arrow button. And it'll load the bases. Another way to know that they're loaded is you can't remove them. And then we're gonna go hit it from send. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that this is gonna make a dust, like a fine dust. Um, so a fine dust of whatever etching, whichever color you're etching. So keep that in mind on whatever you're etching it on, then it's gonna get messy. And keep that in mind for anything that's around it. It's not a lot of mess, but there is a mess that kind of comes with it. All right, so we're back over at the computer. Now that we have everything loaded into our silhouette, or into our cameo, we hit the send button. Now, um, what we're gonna do is go over here and select metal etching sheets. And then under this one, we're gonna hit etch, an etching tool. And then we're gonna click our design and hit etch. Might take it a minute because it's quite a lot of lines. I have been using the settings of a six for speed and then a force of 20 and then one pass. Now you can, this may be a pain a little bit safe. You can probably use more force, but if you use too much and the machine gets caught up, then you've ruined your piece of metal. You can also do another pass and increase the force if you want to try that and see if it'll give you a different look. So, but other than that, we are going to hit the send button and the curio is going to etch. Um, once your machine has been etching for a while, you might want to just, I go and just blow so blow some of the, the dust out of the way so that way it's not trying to etch over dust. All right, so what I did is I hit the double arrow base, double arrow button on the base of the curio and removed it. And this is what it looks like all done. It's kind of cool. Stuff like this is all part of the deal with the curio. It doesn't get everything, um, it doesn't, doesn't etch everywhere. It's just part of the look. It doesn't etch everywhere, kind of depending on the design. So you're going to peel it off. And this is what I was talking about. It, it, it's far stickier than it feels like it should be. So there we go. And then you can make sure you put your little mat back on top of it, the cover back on top. So there is our finished letter. And I have my cutting mat back out now. 
This is your standard like cutting mat for quilting, which is never get used for never gets used for quilting at my house. So, um, quilting roller also never gets used for quilting at my house, and one of the rotary cutters. Um, this is some metal I got off Amazon. I, I don't really know that much about it. I just got off Amazon. Um, and so this guy is five by seven. So I like to cut this guy seven by nine. So it's two inches bigger all the way around. And you just line them up and cut them. It cuts pretty well. And see, he cuts really, really well. So that's seven, and then we're gonna cut nine. So here we have our metal. You can kind of flatten them out a little bit. And then what I use is some double sticky tape and just kind of wing it and put them in the middle. I just lost the end of my double sticky tape. How long do you think it'll take me to find it? Now you've only kind of got one shot with the metal because it's so soft. If you pull it off, it will, it'll crinkle to the point you can't really put it back together. So hysterically, I have this on my pink office chair because I can't get my tripod high enough for y'all to see it. So this is our letter on our, on our metal. And this is the reef that I made. And that's my pink chair. And um, I found these really cool spiders at Michael's and they just clip on. So for this guy, all you have to do is just clip him on since he's so light and he'll just clip right on to the spiders and to the deco mesh. Now I don't know what will happen if you put these outside. If you put like the letter, the metal and the letter outside, I don't know what happened. The deco mesh will tend to fade over time, but I don't know what will happen to this at all. But you could also use the good old um, pipe cleaners and hot glue him and then tie him to the frame as well if you didn't have any of these clip-on spiders. So you could do that as well. Um, he's also really light, so if he was going to be in your house, you could probably just squish him in here and the deco mesh would probably hold him in place. Alrighty, so there is our finished wreath, personalized wreath with our free letters for this month. And we've etched them and we put them on our metal and that is our reef all ready to go. I hope you like this project. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions, please let me know. And please like and subscribe to our little videos. And we will see you again soon.